Instead of stuffing, I'm gonna fill the turkey with a slightly smaller turkey. It's called a tur turkey key. A tur turkey key? Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, oh, oh. Yeah, I was there for the insertion. He used shoehorns. I'll be having sides. What's up, dude? Yeah, what did you want me to do again? Oh, f that. Okay, now that we've got that out of our systems, it's time to get to making the tur tur key key, which for the record, like all of you, I think is a patently bad idea. But I think the only way we're gonna make it work is by deboning one of our turkeys. In this case, Jeffrey, our slightly smaller turkey. I'm sorry if my anthropomorphizing them earlier made this difficult to watch. But to debone the turkey, we're basically making shallow cuts, starting at the spine, going underneath the thigh and the breast, and making our way around the carcass, which we're then going to delicately separate from the thin layer of skin between the breasts. Set that aside for stock making and then it's time to try and even out our breast meat, which is very thick at the top and very thin at the bottom. So we're gonna place some shallow cuts right up near the top of the breast so we can spread them out a little bit more evenly. Then I'm also going to remove the wings for both ease of rolling and insertion. And then I'm gonna score the breast meat a little bit, which is going to allow us to season it a little bit more deeply. Set the wings aside. These are also great for making stock. And then it's time to season the interior of our bird with a few generous pinches of kosher salt and a few generous twists of freshly ground black pepper. It was at this point that I also decided it would probably be best to remove the thigh bones as well, which we're going to accomplish by scraping the meat down the side of the bone, separating the bone at the joint, and running our knife in between. And again, set aside to make turkey stock. We're about to destroy this perfectly good turkey, so we might as well make as much use of it as possible. And now it's time to roll and tie our turkey into a long, cylindrical, tubular shape that's going to make it easier to insert into the cavity of the other turkey. Ugh cut off the strings and flip the bird over so we can also tie up the legs. Because despite everything else that's happening here, we still want our turkey to at least have a somewhat Norman Rockwell appearance. I also decided to flip it over and tie it a few more times so it didn't look so ribbed for your turkey's pleasure, but that ended up kind of making it worse. So I just decided to soldier forward, not thinking too much about the social and moral repercussions of what I was doing, and set up Jeffrey for an overnight dry brine, which is accomplished simply enough by heavily coating the outside of the bird with kosher salt. Maybe Maybe a few twists of freshly ground black pepper and refrigerating uncovered overnight, during which time we can get to the noble profession of making stock. I'm just going to lay out all of our various turkey trimming byproducts on a wire rack set in a rim baking sheet, drizzle with a little bit of vegetable oil, and hit in a 400 degree Fahrenheit oven for 30 to 45 minutes, until deeply golden brown and ready to make some delicious turkey juice. Directly into our tallest and narrowest stock pot they go. The more narrow the pot, the less evaporation there's going to be, and the longer you can let it simmer without having to top up with extra water. I'm also going to add some celery, some carrots, a whole head of garlic chopped in half, a whole onion quartered, a few sprigs each of fresh rosemary and fresh thyme, a little handful of parsley, a few whole black peppercorns, and two bay leaves. It is the perfect mathematical formula for amazing stuffing and gravy this Thanksgiving. Bring it to a bare simmer, partially cover, and let it go for anywhere from 4 to 24 hours, using an induction burner like this one if you don't want to leave the stove on all night. Meanwhile, our bird has emerged from the refrigerator its skin desiccated and ready to be crisped in a 400 degree Fahrenheit oven. For how long, I cannot say. It depends entirely upon the size of your bird, the performance of your oven. The best thing you can do is roast until the skin is glassy crisp and the thickest part of the breast registers 155 degrees Fahrenheit. In its current form, this bird would be absolutely lovely to slice and serve, but now it's time to ruin it. First, we're going to go ahead and align it with our receiving turkey. Might as well snip the strings off. This thing should be able to hold its form all on its own. This is all starting to remind me of those videos of planes refueling mid-flight or middle school health class videos. Next, of course, we have to lubricate our insertive turkey. Oh, rope, wrong lube. Let's use some vegetable oil. Now, if you have any small children, I would ask them to leave the room because it is time to insert our turkey torpedo. This really doesn't look right. Let's 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 go ahead and blur this. Not trying to get demonetized here. I'm kidding, of course. This is perfectly natural and normal and part of life. Oh my god, here come the shoehorns. I honestly got these shoehorns as a joke and never intended to use them, but I can't seem to get this horrible thing to happen, so I need a little shoehorn help. And look at that, it actually worked. Oh god, that is horrible to look at. I totally get what Robin was talking about now. I think I've just ruined Thanksgiving. Oh, no, wait, now I've ruined it. 
Anyway, we're just gonna keep shoving this turkey in there until we have ourselves a tur tur key key. Probably one of the worst ideas ever, not only because of the spectacle of insertion, but because it virtually guarantees that one turkey is either going to be overcooked or undercooked. Because by the time this giant receiving bird has finished cooking through, its turkey dildo will have become hilariously dry. But in the name of science, I press forward and humbly present to you the tur tur key key. Now, the reason that I pre cooked the smaller turkey is because if I inserted it raw, it would have taken forever to cook and the exterior turkey would have been completely destroyed. With this cooking method, however, most of the turkey is salvageable, and none of it will go to waste. I will be using it in the Thanksgiving Leftovers episode of Basics coming this Thursday. And now, of course, onto the quote-unquote good version of the tur turkey key, inspired by an old recipe from J. Kenji Lopez Alt, one that starts by not only deboning the turkey, but removing the meat and trying to keep as much of the skin intact as possible, because it is now our intention to make a turkey roulade, which will allow us to stuff our turkey with more turkey. First, we're going to start by making some sausage out of the dark meat. To do so, I'm going to trim off the gristle and fat from the meat of the thigh and drumstick, cut into one inch cubes, and place on a parchment lined baking sheet or plate to be chilled in the freezer for 15 to 25 minutes until just starting to turn firm around the edges. This is going to make the meat a whole lot easier to grind, which I'm going to do in a food processor whose blade I have also chilled in the freezer. Into the food processor goes the dark meat, which we are going to pulse repeatedly until we get a nice, finely textured dark meat ground turkey, which we're going to dump out into a bowl and begin adding some flavor to. That sentence didn't turn out right. Anyway, I'm going to add some finely chopped fresh herbs, a little bit of sage, probably a packed tablespoon's worth, maybe a half teaspoon of finely minced thyme, and a teaspoon of finely minced rosemary. I am also, of course, going to season liberally with kosher salt and freshly ground pepper. And because I'm trying to evoke as many Thanksgiving flavors as possible, a little bit of freshly grated nutmeg, and a clove or two of freshly grated garlic. After all, tis the season to be well seasoned. Mix that all together until the herbs and spices are evenly distributed, and voila, some delicious turkey sausage, which we are now going to stuff into our breast. First, we have to remove the tender from the bottom of the breast, along with trimming off any fat or gristle that might be hanging out. And then we're gonna butterfly this bad boy because we want it nice and thin for our roulade. It's still pretty uneven, so I'm gonna cover it with plastic wrap and pound it flat with either a meat mallet or a frying pan. And then I want it to resemble more of a rectangle, so I'm going to trim and butterfly the tender and use it to sort of patch the corner of the breast, turning it into kind of a rectangle. Then we're going to evenly spread our sausage mixture over top, pat it down, and commence to rolling it up, making sure to start rolling with the side that's been patched so it all stays together. Then it's time to once again flatten out our skin. That doesn't look very appetizing, but it will. Once we've gotten it as flat and stretched as we can, we're going to place our roulade in the center with the seam or the ugliest facet facing upward, wrap it in the skin, trim off any excess, and then commence to tying. Same deal as before, we want to tie it every one to two inches or so, but we want to tie it tighter towards the thicker parts of the breast, which will give us a more even roulade, which will help the roulade cook more evenly. Then we're just going to rub this guy down with olive oil, season with kosher salt, and freshly ground pepper, rub it in to make sure that it's nice and evenly seasoned, and roast at 400 degrees Fahrenheit until the thickest part of the roulade registers about 160. I know that temperature sounds a little low for sausage, but we made the sausage ourselves. So as long as you've kept everything cold and clean, you should be good. After resting uncovered for 20 minutes so the skin doesn't get flabby, it's time to carve and see our swirl. And that's kind of cool, isn't it? Hell of a lot better than the last version. Anyway, you can serve this however you like. I'm gonna cut mine into rounds for easy serving. And it might not look at all like a traditional Thanksgiving meal, but you're gonna get juicier meat and fuller flavor by making a roulade, which I shall now demonstrate by eating it. Just gonna top it with some of the gravy that we made from the stock that we made. Make sure you always use all parts of your bird. Don't waste anything. And maybe just add a little color and herbaceousness, some freshly chopped parsley. And there you go, an easy, flavorful, pretty cool looking tur turkey key, which unlike Ted's version, doesn't taste wrong. Instead, it tastes so right it entered the clean plate club. And with that, folks, happy Thanksgiving and don't stuff a turkey into another turkey. Hey guys, um, I know today's episode was a little silly, uh, but I wanted to take a minute and talk to you about something very serious, and that is cancer. Um, I have always been surrounded by cancer. Uh, I lost my mother to cancer when I was 11, uh, and most recently my Aunt Kathy, who, with whom I've always been very, very close has been diagnosed with terminal cancer, um, which is why this Thanksgiving I'm very proud to be partnering with Game Theorist with his Cancel Cancer campaign to support St. Jude's Children's Research Center, um, which is an amazing organization. They never bill patients' families for treatment or travel or housing or food. 
Uh, they've increased childhood cancer survivability rates from 20% to 80% in the 50 years that they've been open, and they're pushing towards 90% and will not stop until no child dies from cancer. Again, uh, a future that I'm very much looking forward to. Um, so if you'd like to donate, check out the donate button down here or over here somewhere. Uh, somewhere around the video player, there's a donate button or click the link in the video description below. I myself is, uh, am going to be giving $5,000 to this very worthy cause, uh, and I hope you can give whatever you can, $100, $10, $1, anything makes a difference. Um, and I would be very thankful this Thanksgiving, sorry, I'd be very thankful if you gave whatever you could to this very important cause. Thank you guys so much and have a great holiday.